Welcome to Electron Line, and to give us a better understanding of how we can measure distances with the HR diagram, I wanted to come up with a little example here that hopefully will explain it. So let's say we have two stars, a sun-like star, or like, you know, something like the sun, and a much brighter star, something that's 100 times brighter than the sun. Usually the L sub naught simply means the luminosity of the sun, so in comparison, this star would put out 100 times as much light as this star. If they were placed side by side, this one would look 100 times brighter than this one. All right, so what happens in real life? Well, let's say that we're looking at the two stars. Here's the sun-like star at some distance. And then there we have the very bright star, much brighter than the sun. But since it's so much farther away, let's say that it appears to look exactly the same brightness as the sun-like star. Now, before the HR diagram, and if the two stars were too far away so that the parallax angle could not be measured, so we really wouldn't know how far it was to the stars, you'd see two stars. One was a little bit, uh, one was more like white, whitish in color, white blue in color. The other one would be yellow in color, but they would appear to be the same brightness and you really had no idea to figure out which one was bigger, which one was smaller, which one was farther, which one was closer. You had really no idea. But now with the HR diagram, we're able to take a look at this star, look at its color, look at the wavelength of the light coming towards us, place it on the HR diagram, realizing that it's a B-class star, looks bluish white. We then come up here and then we realize, wow, it is 100 times as bright as a sun-like star. So now we realize we're looking at a star that's really bright, but it looks no brighter than the sun-like star. So therefore, it must be farther away. How much farther away? Well, since the intensity of a star, which is analogous to the luminosity of a star, is proportional to 1 over the distance squared, we can then say that the distance to the brightest star is equal to the square root of the, hum, the number how much brighter it is compared to the sun-like star, the square root of that times the distance to the sun-like star. So since this is 100 times brighter, it must therefore be the square root of 100 or 10 times as far away. That's what we mean by the intensity being proportional to 1 over the distance squared. So if we take the square root of that extra distance, that would then equate to, or if we then, if we take over, well, I'm not saying this right, let me, let me show you what I mean. If we then rearrange these terms right here and we go distance squared is equal to 1 over the luminosity. So again, then if I take the square root, I can say that the distance is therefore equal to 1 over the square root of the luminosity. So that's why if I take the square root of the luminosity, I will get the distance or the extra distance. And so from that, I can then say I take the square root of the increase in luminosity. It's 100 times brighter. Take the square root of that. I get 10. So therefore, it's 10 times as far away. Now, that's how we use the HR diagram. There's only one problem. I still need to somehow establish the base distance for any star. For example, how far was the sun star? I now realize this is 10 times as far away, but how far is it to this star? In order to do that, we came up with a brightness scheme called magnitudes. We have what we call the apparent magnitude, we have the absolute magnitude, and once we understand that, and we throw that together with the understanding of how we measure the distance from one star to another relative to each other, you can then see how we use the HR diagram to actually figure the real distance to any star out there that we can measure its brightness thereof. So, there you go. That's how we use the HR diagram to find the relative distance. In the next several videos, I'll talk about the magnitude scales, and then we'll put it all together, and then we'll be able to figure out the distance to any star based upon its color and its measured brightness.